What if I told you this camera can shoot at 24 millimeter all the way up to 600 millimeters, it can burst 24 photos a second and record crispy 4K video and shoot slow motion video in 1000 FPS all inside of this compact camera system. Well, that sounds a little too good to be true, to be honest. And uh, that is exactly what I'm trying to figure out in this video. And I'm gonna try to answer the question if it's worth putting your money into a bridge camera like this or a mirrorless setup like this. Let's go. So this is the Sony RX10 Mark IV. And for a couple of weeks ago, I didn't even know this camera existed. And <laughs> maybe you're like me and don't know this. So that's why I think this camera deserves some attention, even though it's a almost a six year old camera. So this is my main camera setup, the Sony a7 IV with the Sony 200 to 600 millimeters. So there is an obvious size difference between <laughs> these two 600 millimeter setups. So if size is the most important thing for you, you can turn off this video and go grab one of these. If you're not sure, you can keep watching this video. So I think the size of the camera is surprisingly small. To see that they're fitting 24 to 600 inside of this is pretty cool to see. So this camera has a 20 megapixel one inch sensor. And in mobile photography terms, that is a very large sensor. But in like mirrorless and the DSLR world, it's considered a smaller sensor. So in larger sensors, such as a APS-C or a full frame sensor, it's often more effective in low light conditions and offers improved dynamic range. And, and that is something you see a difference on with this camera. So this camera's one inch sensor can capture high quality images, but is more reliant on good lighting conditions and more balanced lights. Like when faced with a bright sky and a dark foreground or vice versa, you have to kind of choose if you want to expose for the sky or for the highlights. And personally, I feel in the last couple of years with the like modern full frame cameras, like the a7 III and a7 IV, and you can basically just expose like in the middle and then you can drag down the highlights and boost the shadows and you have details in both of the areas. And that is what, what dynamic range is basically. When a camera has bad dynamic range, it kind of, you have to choose like with this one, you have to choose for the sky or for the, the shadows, and then you cannot really get those details back. And this is mainly because of the sensor size. So a smaller sensor usually lacks dynamic range. And if you take a look at like mobile phones, they have even smaller sensors, but they have solved it with like software. So they are doing computational photography, basically. They expose different exposures and then they bring all those photos together and create a balanced photo. That's not something this camera can do really. And a full frame camera can often do that by just having a really nice dynamic range from the start. Let's talk about sharpness for a bit. The sharpness of the photos are surprisingly good in my opinion. Like when you have a fast enough shutter speed and good lighting, the photos turn out very sharp. <laughs> and I, did, I didn't really expect that to be honest. So take a look at this blue tit for example. We have like great details in the feathers and like the photo overall looks very pleasing. And I think the contrast and colors are actually very good. That's not something I would expect from a camera like this before I like tried it out. So that's very good to see because sharp photos is <laughs> obviously something we all love. Sure, like the a7 IV and a 200 to 600 produces sharper images, which is should, <laughs> by the way, because of the price. But the hit rate on a camera setup like that is much better. You, you nail more photos, but I think when you have the right conditions and you nail the sharpness, it's very sharp. I would say it's sharper than the Tamron 100 600 G1. So I went out with two friends to camp later this fall, but we're gonna see what they think about this camera, their first impressions of it. Have you tried one of these? <laughs> do you know what it is? <laughs> <laughs> How do I change the lens? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, but uh, it has 24 can. to 600 millimeters. 24 to 600? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty insane, to be honest. So guess how uh, fast this thing can burst, if you just, a wild guess. I can say my a7 IV, it can burst 10 FPS. 10 FPS. How many do you think this one can? I'm thinking about by my Nikon D750, I had six frames per second. Seven, eight. Seven, eight. 
This one burst 24 what? photos. 24 photos. <laughs> so as we talked about earlier, it's kind of pretty funny. If those of you have seen The Office, yeah. these zooms kind of remind me of that. <laughs> so I know this isn't something new. <laughs> We're acting as we've never yeah, seen something like this, but we I've honestly never used one of these. I've only seen them when I'm out birding and meet people who have like Nikon and Canon ones of these ones. So um Pretty fun to try it out. Have you ever seen anything like this? Mm, yeah, like back in the day. <laughs> you know what it's called? RX-10. <laughs> no, like, like the it's called a bridge camera. <laughs> Which means like it's a bridge between two worlds or? Yeah, I think, I think so. I'm cool. not sure, maybe one of you guys know, but I think it's like a bridge between a DSLR and a compact camera, uh -huh. I think. So it's like a, the lens is stuck. It's stuck and you turn it on. Oh, look at it, it extends. So it's like a 35 millimeter? No, it's what? actually 24 to 600 millimeters. 600 millimeter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wait. Try it out. I, wow. so. I didn't even notice how long the lens <laughs> began. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Like honestly, having 24 millimeters and 600 in the same camera, and it's not like, it's almost as big as the one I'm vlogging with. Pretty cool. I didn't even know they had this. I mean, no, me neither. I saw it on YouTube. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, you're on YouTube? Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's talk about video quality. So I think the 4K 25P looks very crispy and good. Uh, in good lighting conditions, you can really get high quality video. So if you're shooting a lot of video, make sure to shoot in like daylight because <laughs> the thing with a small sensor like this that it's very reliant on good lighting as i mentioned so rising the iso a lot will the footage will quickly fall apart and get grainy but the problem is with wildlife photography and filmmaking is that most wildlife is active during dusk and dawn and at night so having a camera that can record good video in low light it's also very freaking expensive. It's very important if you want like the super high quality f video. Shooting at dusk and dawn with this can work, but it's obviously not ideal. Uh, you can shoot in 1080p up to 120 FPS. Obviously we see a <laughs> difference in resolution, but I think the video looks very good. You can easily create some like nice B-rolls and slow down some footage of birds and stuff. So this camera has a high frame rate mode, enables it to shoot in 250 FPS, 500 and 1000 FPS. When shooting at 1000 FPS, the resolution is 420p. So you can't expect really super high resolution video, but <laughs> so, and I think this feature is very fun to play around with. So speaking of video, uh, the stabilization of this camera is good enough for handhelds still shooting, like shooting photos. But I think for video at 600 millimeters, like your small shakes will be magnified <laughs> to its max. And sometimes the video is like very shaky and sometimes even like unwatchable. I guess maybe it's me getting old, I don't know. But uh, like, like compared to a 600 millimeters mirrorless setup, you have stabilization in both the, the lens and in the camera. They play together and I find that it's still shaky, but it's way more easy to get stable handheld. I highly suggest to use a tripod when filming birds and wildlife with this one. Well, at 600 millimeters. So what about the autofocus on this one? So the autofocus in this camera works really good. I haven't had really any issues with it. It's not as snappy as it is on the more expensive setup, but I can't really expect it. To make this a bit easier for you, maybe you can decide what's right for you. We're gonna do some benefits and some drawbacks with using a bridge camera like this compared to a mirrorless setup. Let's go, let's start with the positives, right? So the standout feature of the RX10 Mark IV is obviously the 24 to 600 millimeter zoom, which is, to me, very pretty freaking cool. So it covers a range of different focal lengths and you don't have to like switch lenses and do anything of that. You have just everything in one camera. So the versatility is a major benefit when you're out like hiking, traveling, or yeah, doing wildlife photography. So the second is to continue shooting, the 24 FPS shooting. So I think a feature like that is 
not something you get on a more expensive camera if you don't put like your money onto a Sony A1 or maybe the A9 Mark III. I think it's very cool to see that in a camera like this. So point number three is it's compact design and it's sure it's pretty similar to point one, but I think this is where it really shines. It's more compact than a mirrorless setup with a bunch of lenses. So to cover the same focal length, this is what I need to carry in my camera bag with my mirrorless setup. So I think the compact design makes it convenient for like on the go shooting and perfect if you're going on a hike and can't really bring a large camera setup. So if the question is to bring a camera or not bring a camera, this is definitely worth bringing. So what are the drawbacks of using a camera like this? So first is the one inch sensor. Like compared to APS-C or full frame cameras, as I mentioned, this means it will not perform as good in like image quality and dynamic range and so on. So number two, with a mirrorless camera, you can like adapt to different shooting situations by just switching the lens. And sure, I know I said that this is a benefit, but it's also a drawback that you can't change the lens because sometimes you want a super wide lens, like 16 millimeter, and sometimes you want maybe a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens, which will give you a very blurry and tasty creamy background. And personally, when, when I started out, I remember when I got my first 50 millimeter 1.8 lens, and I went out and took these kind of bokeh, <laughs> blurry photos and the joy and the inspiration I had was so incredible. And that is something I wish on all photographers when they're starting out that, you know, the joy of like new gear and you really want to try out the lens and the photos turn out great. And yeah, it's just something that I want you to, I want everyone to experience that because I remember how inspired I was. So drawback number three is the price. This camera is relatively expensive if you compare it to uh, like uh, Canon or Nikon's like versions of this and compared to like a Sony a7 III used with a maybe Tamron 150 to 600 with an adapter, you can probably get that around the same price as this one new. So for the same price, you can invest in a mirrorless system giving you more versatility with with the lenses that I mentioned and just more professional quality. So should you go with a bridge camera like this or a mirrorless camera like this? So I can see this camera being perfect for someone that is out a lot in the field, but not mainly do photography. Let's say someone who's doing birding, for example, like they're out looking for birds, but the photos are more for documentation or like identifying what species they're looking at. But what is great with this camera is that you have the 4K capabilities to record crispy video. You have like very good image quality. So you have room to improve. Let's say this person doing birding wants to improve and get better at photography. They don't have to switch out the camera immediately they can have this camera and improve with it because of the features and the image quality is that good and of course for those of you who aren't beginners and but still want the most versatile and compact camera system this is a great choice because as i mentioned the image quality is for what it is very good but i think a mirrorless camera setup is better to invest in if your main priority is image quality you feel that the photos is what's the most important to you. And if you're not sure where your photography like will end up, like maybe you want to try out different types of photography, like weddings or car photography, astro, wildlife, there's tons of stuff to try out. And with a traditional like detachable lens camera, you can really try out different styles a bit easier, I think. And as I mentioned, trying out different lenses is a lot of fun and it can really boost your creativity, or at least for me. And for wildlife photography, having the, the benefits of a larger sensor, a big deal when you're out in the field, it's getting dark and you have a wild animal in front of you, it feels great that you've invested your money into a camera that can handle that. So tell me, did you know this camera existed before this video? I. I did not. Tell me in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. And it's great to be back. I've been missing you guys. So I'll see you in the next video pretty soon. Bye.